I'm John Buchanan, and what we're gonna do in this video is we're going to learn how to reprogram a beat using the slip tool. Before we find out exactly what the slip tool is, let's have a listen to the track we're gonna be working on. It's obviously the loop at the top we're gonna to be focusing on. Okay, so what I've got here is an audio loop that I've dragged in from the loop browser. And what I want to do is to effectively reprogram it. Now, this is a really common thing that we do all the time when we're working with beat loops. What we want to do is to chop them up and basically reorder them. And in fact, what might have happened once upon a time before the slip tool is that we might have chosen to do that manually. I'll show you what I mean. So if I wanted to kind of reprogram the individual kind of slices of this first bar, what I could do would be to say, okay, I'm going to chop this up using the option button and I'm going to click it let's say every 16th note and that's going to give me 16 slices of audio and then what I might choose to do would be to duplicate this to create a new track I might keep this one in the right same position I might decide that what I want to do is to then grab these three and drag them down here and reprogram them and effectively what I can do is to copy individual slices down to different positions I can reorder them decide where I want them to go etc etc and what I end up with is a new beat loop what a lot of work okay what I'm going to do is to undo all of those steps until we get back to a place where we have our beat loop back where it was this introduces the slip tool. Now the slip tool is a new tool within uh, the new version of Logic, or it's not that new anymore, I've got to stop saying that, but in uh, Logic 10.8, what we effectively have now within the toolbar is a couple of new tools, and the slip tool is this one here. And what it allows us to do is to move which bit of audio we're actually looking at within a given region. So in other words, what we can do is to create the chops like I just did, but then effectively shuttle the waveform that exists within the audio region left and right in order to select a different bit. Now, mostly I suspect that the slip tool has been introduced in order to provide a really easy way to kind of get bits of audio in time that are, that are out of time. So if you think about it, if I was to record a vocal and maybe a phrase is just a few frames late, what I can do is to chop around the section that's late and just shuttle the audio back a little bit until it's in time. But what we're gonna do here is to see that actually, depending on which settings we choose, we can actually completely reprogram beats using the same tool. So again, what I'm gonna do is to select the end of bar Two, which is my first beat, uh, my first bar of this beat loop. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to chop this up this time in eighth notes. Again, I'm going to use option. And this time what I'm going to do is to chop in eighth notes. And now I've got eight individual slices for this individual region. Okay, so what exactly does the slip tool do? Well, if I click on T and select it, we have a chance to see. So now you can see that when I hover over this region, I've got these arrows showing me that there is audio in both directions. In other words, there's a bit of audio file that's left and there's a bit of audio file that's right. Now then, you know when you buy a new Mac and it, that's a good day, isn't it, when that happens? I mean, it's an expensive day, but it's a good day. And what happens is when you're going through the setup, the mouse says, do you want scrolling to be up or down? So in other words, when you make a gesture downwards, do you want the screen to move down or do you want it to move up? And I'm willing to bet that half of you have scrolling that goes one way and half of you have scrolling that goes the other because our brains are wired together in different ways. This is a bit like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this second region and I'm going to move the audio behind it. And you can see that what's happening is that all of the audio is moving because I've got lots of regions selected. So I'm gonna just undo that for a second. I'm gonna select just this one region and we'll focus in on just this second region. So using the slip tool, what I can do is to move this. Now, which way am I moving? So effectively what I'm doing is I'm pushing this audio along this way, which means that now what I've got is a copy of the first slice. In other words, I've shoved the audio that way. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, it would make more sense if that went the other way because I want to go back to that bit of audio. Told you. Okay, so effectively what we've got is a chance to literally just shuttle through this file. 
Now that's fine, except that I might do something weird and select kind of a moment like this where nothing is going to be quite in time because I can see that the transients no longer line up with where I want them to be. So in other words, if I was just shuttling through the file this way and going to find bits of audio, I'd have to be quite careful about exactly where I place them in order for there not to be a kind of weird glitch in terms of the way that this loop works. So again, what I'm gonna do is to undo this individual step and instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to think about my snap value. Now if what I do here is to select a beat, then effectively what I'm doing is I'm no longer moving in really small little units of time. Instead what I'm doing as I shuttle left and right is I'm only moving in beats, which means that all of these tempo locked bits of beat loop effectively shuttle into the screen depending on which one I select. But as you can see, they're all locked. So what this really means is that without re me really having to think about it too hard, what I can do is just literally sort of scroll through this waveform. It would be really good, by the way, Apple, are you listening? If what you could do would be to do that kind of slot machine thing that you do on the iPhone, right? So with some things we can just hit scroll if we're setting timers, for instance, and we want to sort of scroll up to a particular number. It would be great if what I could do here would be to flick this and to have it sort of slow down as it moves through the audio region. Something to think about, please, Apple. But nevertheless, what I can do is I can uh, sort of move down and just come and find different bits of my beat loop and effectively what I'm doing is I'm just scrolling through it. So I could decide that what I want to do is to have well, that looks to me either like a kick or a snare. I can see the waveforms a little bit bigger whereas these smaller sections that almost looks like a repeat of some hats. I'm not thinking about it too hard but nevertheless what I'm going to do is just come and sort of think a little bit about how I want this to work and if I wanted a different beat loop in bar two or the second bar I should say, bar three actually, um, then of course I'm in a position to do that too. Now this time I might decide to simply chop up in whole beats. So whereas the first bar is in eighth notes, this time what I'm doing is I'm selecting a beat. And the reason why I was only able to chop in beats is because of this snap value. So effectively what I'm doing is I'm building a relationship between this value here and the sections of the beat loop that I am effectively reprogramming. So again, back to the slip tool, select one region at a time. And what I might decide to do would be to say, okay, I'm gonna just choose completely different bits to the originals. And of course I can move in either direction. So now what I've got is a beat loop where the first half has been reprogrammed and the second half is as it was out of the loop browser. Let's just have a listen to the beats by themselves. Okay, so that's a really nice start. Effectively, quite quickly, I mean, obviously I'm talking. If I weren't talking, imagine how fast that would be. But effectively what we've got is an opportunity just to go and select those slices. Now you might also be thinking, yeah, but what if what I wanted to do was to create some fills, some things that were maybe a little bit busier or a, bit, a little bit glitchier? Well, remember, all I'm really doing here is effectively creating the window of a region and deciding what's going to appear in that window. Does that make sense? So I'm not doing any time stretching. I'm not doing any of that kind of processing. I'm just selecting the bits of audio that are going to appear within each individual window. So let's suppose I wanted something a little bit busier right at the end. Well, that would involve some duplication. So in other words, if I came right to the end, and in fact, let's do that right at the end of this uh, sort of bit of audio. Okay, let's suppose that what I wanted to do here right at the end of bar five was to have something which had got a little bit of a kind of drag or a roll happening. Firstly, what I'd need to do would be to chop that section. So I had that going on here. And then what I'd have to do, again, I'd have to select my division values. I'd then be in a position where I had to effectively just turn those into 16th notes. And then what I'd probably have to do would be to in fact make them shorter than that. So effectively what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all four of these. I'm going to adjust their lengths, which again, I'm gonna to have to do by coming back to my, maybe to my smart control because the divisions are set to 16th notes at the moment. Remember, this effectively is just choosing the snap value. So what I'd have to do then would be to make these shorter 
I then have to duplicate them into these spaces so that effectively I had my kind of role happening. And then using the slip tool, what I'd have to do would be to come back here and then say, okay, I'm gonna choose a different bit of audio for each of these so that they're all just a little bit different. So probably for this kind of programming, this approach to creating these sorts of roles isn't the fastest, most intuitive way of doing it. But of course it is gonna get us a result and that is gonna be worth hearing. So let's just do that. We've got our first four slices. Let's maybe select this one here and I'm just scrolling through, kind of mostly looking for the sort of smaller uh, bits of transient, which are gonna be the hats and the things that are gonna feel a bit fizzier probably as we listen through. And then maybe let's just come and find something different for this last one here. So it can absolutely be done this way, but of course it's just gonna be a little bit slower. Shall we have a listen? Okay, but what's absolutely true is that we don't have to stop here. On this channel recently, we've been looking at a few ways that we've been able to kind of apply beat style processing. And having used the slip tool to create variation in this way, which I think is really interesting, we could of course partner it with Beat Breaker. So if I come and find Beat Breaker, of course what I've got a chance to do is to say, okay, well, what sort of processing am I doing here? It's kind of stuttery, glitchy, choppy stuff. So maybe what I'm gonna do is to press the edit button rather than programming a pattern of my own. If you want to learn how to do that, definitely go and look at the two Beat Breaker videos we've made. But what I'm gonna do is to just come in here, drop into the kind of preset menu. And yeah, it feels to me like something a bit stuttery might be quite good. Let's just choose soft stutter. Why not? Okay, this pattern looks like this and let's hear it. Okay, so I've got my fill at the end, which is now being processed by Beat Breaker. And as I have discussed on the other Beat Breaker videos, often quite a nice way of working with Beat Breaker is to drop the mix level so that rather than being a complete reinterpretation of the beat processing that Beat Breaker is doing, effectively it's just providing this kind of parallel layer of processing. Let's put that back in with everything else. really nice. So effectively what we've done is to reprogram this beat. So the slip tool is really useful. Working in combination with the snap value, what you have a chance to do is to shuttle bits of audio left and right, effectively allowing you to literally just kind of shine or open a window up on a different bit of audio at any given moment. And yes, it's going to be really useful for those corrective moments where you've recorded something live and you just want to put it in time. But it's also really useful in this kind of creative reprogramming way too.